So do you hear me at the in this oil oh, case? Okay. I have no question. So um, first thing, welcome to this presentation and mainly about the new version of Java. Okay, no, just kidding. Okay. Um, I would like to explain the new feature of Python 3.7, but firstly, I'm going to explain. I'm just Stefan. I come from Belgium, just for the conference, and I'm a PSF member, fellow. Uh, I work for the marketing group, a co-organizer of your Python, a contributor of CPython, and from other project, and just, I live with Python. Okay, just that. And of course, I love the unicorn. So, what's new with Python 3.7? Firstly, a new syntax. No. <laughs> really, we have some improvement in Python 3.7. Firstly, the breakpoint uh, new function, the data classes, the new model attributes, get at it here and there, the postpone evaluation for annotation, the time function with the nanosecond resolution. How to, do you like the deprecation warning when you develop with Django or with another tool? and you have a lot of warnings when you execute the test. Yes, we know that. The context variables when you use AsyncIO or your HTTP, and of course, your TF8 mode, and some other stuff. Firstly, the breakpoint. What, what's that? Who started to develop with Python? Nobody? Who is an expert with Python? Okay, two, three, five, six. Okay, sometimes when you want to develop an, an application with Python, you can try this kind of code when you are a student. And you can get this kind of crash. You know that. So, the situation is very clear. Firstly, you have to use a debugger. You can use the print, uh, the print statement, or just the logging uh, module. Or you could use the debugging station. How can you do that? Firstly, Choose the right debugger. We have the debugger keyword. No, it's just a joke. Okay, it's just from JavaScript. I'm not a fan of JavaScript, but sometimes I need to develop with this tool, so. But for us, there was another solution. Which one? We have PDB, PDB, high PDB, PDBPP, web PDB, et cetera, et cetera. PyCharm, of course. Hemax, Vim. Like, as you like. So, for PDB, we have PDB, PDB set trust. Who use PDB? Me. Who use PUDB? Me. It's an end interface. Of course, we don't know when we start, we don't know which, PDB, uh, which debugger we can use. For that, we have a new function, breakpoint. Breakpoint is just a new function, and this one will execute the debugger when you need the debugger. Why? Because when you execute with breakpoint, you will get the default debugger of Python, just PDB, okay? That's fine. But if you want to override this, this behavior, you can use just a variable, Python breakpoint. Python breakpoint is equal to zero, will disable the, the, break, uh, the, the debugger. If you specify just an empty string, it will execute PDB. If you try with PUDB set trace, you will execute PUDB, or IPython embed, or of course, a web interface for your debugging session, like that, okay? Of course, you can use um, Jupyter or another project. So, whew. this feature has, has been developed in one day, sorry. That was the... Uh, the worst feature of Python 3.7. Okay, how about the data classes? The data classes, what's that? It's just a structure to define some classes with, um, come on, how, how can I say that? Um, just for a pod in PHP, just a PHP object data model or something like that. Okay, but in Python, if we want to create a simple structure, we cannot use, we, we have to use the classes, or we could use uh, the name tuple, okay? Example, 
here is just with a tuple. I would like to represent a person, okay? In this case, I am my tuple, just here. I can have an access within this. But I don't know if I'm going to use the first name or the last name. Okay, there is a solution for that. I could use the dictionary. So I have my dictionary, I represent the structure, yeah. But I have another problem. I would like to have the dot notation or just an indice. We cannot do that with the, the dictionary. Of course, we can, we, can, we can use the name tuple. With the name tuple, we define a new structure just here and we can instantiate it and access to the attribute and just execute the quality operator, and et cetera, et cetera. But the name tuple is just in read-only mode, okay? So, the normal example when we want to learn the class, we can use just a class. If we want to implement the operator for the equality, for the letter than or greater than, we have to implement these operators, okay? So, it's not very difficult. With the data classes, we have to implement just some lines. Just use the decorator data class. From that, we have to use the type heighting of Python 3.5. For example, in this case, I'm going to explain, uh, I'm going to uh, define two attributes, first name and last name. These this attributes are just strings. And I can use uh, the constructor of the, my class. You can see he, foo and bar is just, just the first name and the last name of my person. And I can have an access and I can have uh, an equality uh, operator. So, we can define some default values for the, for the, with the data classes. Here, just here, we can use just the equal, equal to zero. Okay? And of course, when I'm going to instantiate the position, Charleroi, my hometown, sorry. I don't need to, uh, to give the latitude and the longitude. By default, the value will be zero, okay? So, of course, with the data classes, we can have a collection, just here. I'm an attendee, and there is a conference with a lot of attendees, okay? Here, I need to use field. Field is another function from the data classes. Uh, library. By default, this, is, this function will execute the factory, and this factory is just a list, a function returning a list of attendees. Okay? From that, I can instantiate my conference, and I'm going to get an instance of a list for my attendees. And of course, uh, I will, I'm going to have one element in my list, just because when I'm going to call the, uh, my, uh, my default factory, sorry, I'm going to get a list of one element. So, of course, because it's a, just a class, I can try to inherit, uh, create some properties and methods. Okay? It's not, uh, when you use a name tuple, you can do the same result, you can have the same result if you inherit from name tuple. Okay, but it's just uh, tricky. With the data classes, you can do it really easy. So, of course, the data class can have a lot of arguments for the configuration. The first one is just init. The init will call the init. Rep will execute the rep. Ec equal, etc., etc. That's useful when you don't want to use uh, the other, if you don't want to use uh, the sort function from a list. And the frozen, if you want to have a frozen data class. Example, just here. So, we have, we define the, the attribute when you execute, when we call the, the, the decorator, just frozen is equal to true. The person, first name, last name, age. And we can see that we, get, we will get an exception because my instance is just in frozen mode. Okay? For the other, we have the, the, the comparator operator for that. For the inheritance, we can create a person and we can inherit, uh, we can create another class in where, the, uh, where we specify the inheritance. Example with user and person. And of course, you can see here 
just the, the attribute of the first, uh, first class, but for the second instance, for user, the two first arguments are just the first name and the last name, and the rest is just the, config the configuration for the user. Okay? So, of course, do you like to use MyPy? Do you know MyPy? No? Okay. Do you know MyPy? Yeah, me too. So, oh, that's very funny, so, sorry. We are 200 and nobody is using MyPy. Okay, <laughs> just why not? Okay, it's just a joke. We, can, we have the type thing here, and with MyPy we can detect if there is a problem with the, the type, just that. Of course, we can convert a, a data class an instance of a data class to a dict or just to a tuple with this helpers, as dict and has tuple. Okay? So, conclusion about the data classes. We can replace uh, the tuples, the, sim the name tuple is a simple, simple class with few lines of code. Because we use a type ID thing, we can use MyPy or another tool. Of course, we can accept default values. And yes, the default values has been added to the name tuple in Python 3.6 or 3.7? 3.7. And we, have come, we can have some logic with the methods and properties, inheritance, and some helpers. It was a great feature. If you want to read uh, the mailing list of Python, there was a very big thread about that. So, okay. The next point is just the PEP 562 about how to get some attribute from a model. Example. Mm. The get at ETR, this function, is just a specific function from a model. For example, we want to use a not very hard function, a deprecated function, okay? Uh, that's the case with uh, time, uh, temp file mcast temp. You want to use it, but there will, normally there is a deprecation warning, but we don't, can, we don't generate it. So if I try to generate, uh, if I try to use my whole function with uh, just trying to call it, I'm going to get this deprecation warning. All function is just deprecated. How can I do that without modifying the source code? Just my code. I don't want to add warn and warn. I don't want to add these warnings. I don't want to edit my code. For that, sorry, I could use the get at it here. It's just a new function for the module, and this one will be called by the, the loading of the, the module, and we will try to, for example, in this case, if the function that we, re we receive here if this one is just in the deprecated names, just defined uh, on the top of the files, we can execute just a warning. Example, deprecation warning. And if there is no problem, we can return the function. It's just the case here. If there is a problem, wait, there is a, a raising of an, an exception. Okay? For the dear function, this function can be used in this case just if we want to sort the, the output of the dear function of a model. Mm. Can be used for, for some stuff. For example, in my example, I want to show the first, uh, first function and for the, the hand, the deprecated functions. It can be useful for the rest. It's just an example, okay. For the postponed evaluation of annotation, what's that? Did you try this cal? Oh, no. If you don't use MyPy, you cannot, you, you don't know that. What is the, disc uh, what I, I would like to define a tree with a node and two nodes for the children. The first one will be a node for the left and right will be a node, okay? There's no problem with that, normally. But we can get an exception with Python with Python 3.6. Why? Because the node class is not yet implemented. But there is a workaround. 
use a string just here. Okay, but we will we will break uh, we will break sorry um, the detection the syntax uh, analysis. From that, there is a problem, and with the new version of Python 3.7, sorry, we can have the, anno the annotation just here. And now, from future, we can import from future the annotations, and we can define node. From that, there is a lazy evolution of, uh, of the, the symbols, and Python will work. Just we don't need to use a forward inference. Um, there, is, there are some scientifics here about not, no resolution, no. It's another feature in Python 3.7. By default, the time function will return a float. It's just limited by the representation of the float. It's uh, 64 bits. Uh, the format is this one. And when we want to have the, resolution, the nanosecond resolution, there will be a limitation with the time. Over 104 days, we lose the nanosecond resolution. For that, we have implemented a few functions. Clock get time NS for nanosecond, and we can, for example, monotonic NS or time NS. The difference is just here we have a float, there we have an integer. If you like to use the nanosecond resolution for your project, benchmark, and whatever, you can. It just, uh, my advice, use a nanosecond resolution. So, for the deprecation warning, uh, there is a developer for Django or another library. Do you like to use the deprecation warning? Hmm? You? Okay. In fact, with Python 3.2, the default behavior of the, the interpreter is just, I'm going to hide the deprecation warning. Okay, why not? But there was a very big side effect. Firstly, uh, if you want to develop with a new function, if you don't like to read the deprecation warning because you like to ignore them, you will have a, a problem with your migration. And of course, uh, with PyTest or with another framework, we can hide uh, the deprecation warning. Example, that's with Python 3.6. Here, I try to create just a virtual environment with Python 3.6. If I execute the test, I have no warnings, okay? With the new version, we can get the deprecation warnings automatically. Why? Because we will use them. Um, this pre deprecation warning will be, will be showed uh, shown, sorry, when we use it, use them in the main function of Python. Just, okay. So, for the context variables, mm, how can I introduce that? Uh, no, I, I know that. <laughs> when we use uh, Flask, for example, Flask or another, top, another tool, in an asynchronous uh, method, in an asynchronous mode, we can have a problem because um, Flask or Django, my, Flask is the, the best example, has the G variable or the session variable. And this variable are just assigned to the thread local storage. But in the asynchronous mode, we only use one thread for a lot of requests. And there is a problem with that. We have a relation from one to many, okay? The problem with that, we can have a crash because we are not sure to work with the right uh, request, okay? For that, the context variable has been introduced um, in 3.7 and maybe by the, uh, so, maybe with IO HTTP, no? Not yet, okay. But to answer to this question, we define the context bars. When you use um, a coroutine, there is a context. Okay, when you, rec you receive a request, we will add some variables on the context. And when we will switch from one coroutine to another one, of course, we will assign 
we will read the right variables from the context. Example, here, I'm going to define just the context variables. This one will be assigned to the context. It's just a global. I receive my incoming request, and I'm going to set just the, the name of my user, for example, to the, current, to the context var. This one will be added to the context. And when we receive another request, there will be a switch. Just that. Okay. For the UTF-8 mode, UTF-8 mo UTF mode is useful in some cases. The case, the use case for us, that was just for Docker, because sometimes we don't specify the UTF-8 mode encoding. And by default, it just disabled. Okay, but we can specify, we can enable it if we, if LCA all is just defined to POSIX or C. Just the default uh, behavior of a Docker image. By default, and if we use the UTF-8 mode, automatically everything will be in UTF-8 mode. We will override the, the default encoding of Python. Okay, as a case with, Python, uh, with Windows, we don't use UTF-8. So, for the documentation, it's another pep. If you like to translate your favorite language, uh, favorite tool in your favorite language or mother language, um, there's a project for that. You can try to translate to Slovakian, or in Ukrainian, or in German, Dutch, or in Japanese. Okay? It, uh, this feature has, well, it's not a feature, it's just a project for Python 3 and Python, mainly for Python 3. But if you want to translate your uh, uh, there is some meetup here in Slovakia, yeah. I've seen Coder Dojo. Coder Dojo is just for the kids, yeah. Oh, kids, from 7 or 7, 10, 77. But sometimes in France, we, we are not um, fluent in English. That's my case, of course. But we like to translate everything in French. The last month I was in, in Spain. And that was the same case. Every, everybody wants to learn a new language with his mother or her mother language. You can do the same thing for the, small, for the kids in Slovakian or in Ukrainian or Russian, okay? And with this step, we can translate everything. Uh, we, you can help us. So, not in the peps. Ah, yeah, sorry, it's just an update for you about Python 3.6 to Python 3.7. Oh, there is a new library importlib.resource. With this one, we can load a binary file from your package. Before, ah, for example, I would like to read just this file from my library, okay? Because I have a test and I would like to read a binary file from my test. With Python 2 or Python 3 before 3.7, we have to use a PKG resource or just this thing. We have the path, we have the pass. Try to read the bytes, okay? With 3.7, we can import resource from importlib and just read read binary, just shorter. Or we can use just the the, the module. It's just a small feature. The improvement is about the the performance and a simpler interface. So, for the rest. We have um, we keep the insertion order of the for the dict since Python 3.6. If you don't know that, uh, we have a problem with that with Python 3.8. In, uh, in Python 3.8, uh, we have introduced a, an incompatibility with Python 3.7 with the XML uh, module. For example, in some tests, we use a comparison byte by byte. Byte, byte, byte. Sorry for that. Um, but we, because we keep the insertion order in the dict, no, we can keep the same order for the tags and for the attributes. Okay? And there is a very big issue, a, a big thread uh, for Python 3.8 for the next version. And the solution is just uh, maybe you have to fix your libraries. Example, 
I have my dict, define some keys with values, and when I print the, the dict, I get the same order. The name is, is the first, location is the second one, and year is the third one. Okay? We keep the other. <sighs> For the from import. Hmm? Then slide. After I'm going to sleep. Sorry. Um, before 3.7, when you try to import demo from iter tools, you have this message, cannot import name demo. Okay, but from which library? Uh, with Python 3.7, from iter tools. For the debugging session, it's just interesting. I think and await are keywords. Yeah. So if you try that, you will get an exception, syntax error. Okay, please try to migrate your code. Uh, Django IQ has this problem with a very hard version, and sometimes we can have the problem with my with the code. That was my case. Sorry. Asynchronous improvement, async IO improvement. When you want to execute just a client, here's the code. Before, we need to create an event loop, and just Try to execute my coroutine with run until complete. And if there is no problem, just close the loop. With 3.7, just asyncio.run. Okay? Okay. We have some new function. Asyncio will support ah, supports the context var. Uh, we have the, the, the create task, it's just an alias. We can start a TLS connection. We can have the current task. We can have all the tasks with this function, all tasks, and of course we can use the send file function from the kernel with the loop success, uh, success file. And just that, use Python 3.7. Sorry. Um, yes, if you don't know, Python 2.7 is dead in, two, in a few months. Okay, because we receive a lot of uh, bug fix or just about improvement for Python 2.7 today. It's not a joke. So, uh, no, you know, we, we stop everything. No, no. So they want to do a fork. No. no. Okay, I just, I'm finished. Thank you so much, and thank you also for the reminder that the days of Python 2 are, are coming to an end. So, All right. So, uh, first yeah. question. Yeah. Did Python 3.7 bring any speed improvements? Yes. Yeah, 10%. For a thing I imp No, it's not a joke. There is a benchmark. Uh, come on, please. Here. Yup, yup. Where are you, benchmark? Oh. Doo -doo. Improvement. Sorry, I just removed some stuff. But there is a graph. Mm. Yes, my source card, sorry. Mm -hmm. I like to publish everything with you. Ah, yeah. Come on. Yes. Maybe 10%, okay? But that was, it's a graph from a very, very early version of Python 3.7. And now we have some improvement with AsyncIO. Uh, for some function uh, of AsyncIO, we have 15, yeah, 15 percent, and sometimes 400 percent of improvement uh, for the, the speed of for about the performance. So, second question: uh, what Awesome. Is, what is coming in 3.8, 3.9, etc.? Oh. 3.8 will be released normally in a few months, next uh, yeah, in de December. If you want to know that, there's the dev guide. Uh, no, pep 3.8. I don't have internet. Oh, sorry. December, normally. <laughs> December 2000, uh, this year. Not the next year, okay? The Christmas present, lovely. Okay, uh, your favorite feature that did not make it into Python 3.7, will it appear in 3.8? Oh, the, the, my favorite, 
feature, Python 3.8. That's not quite there yet. Um, the last pep where BD the BDFL uh, has left the, the boat. About what? Uh, pep 572. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, cool, but, uh, we'll need to look it up. <laughs> uh, right. When you want to write that. Uh -huh. Python, um, GitHub, GitHub, Python, Python version, yes, okay, up. I was uh, running the alpha here, look at that. This one, oh, Hopefully. if. Just this, that one. I like it, but there will be, I think for me there will be a very big problem because with this syntax, yeah, you can you, you replace salut, hello, by an input from an, an external function, okay. But you can do a lot of very, whew, uh, you can have a very big headache if you want to, if you don't like the, the simplicity, okay, because it's a very rare gun. So, how many people are active? Um, actively, mm, maybe on GitHub. We are. Uh, I'm not a code developer. I'm just a contributor. Okay, but normally uh, one one hundred, and by week maybe twenty twenty person. And Guido is paid one day uh, for the development of Python per week. Victor Steiner is uh, is paid by Red Hat. Is the the only one to work fully on fully work on Python on the development of Python. The rest we have Nick Coglan, uh, no, uh, yes, Eric Smith, Eric Snow, and some other developers, and Brett Cannon, mm -hmm. uh, and me when I have time. But I'm not a, a code dev. Uh, if you want to pick your questions, just make sure to read them because uh, we want to have them in the stream as well and also for the recording, oh, uh, or I can read them for you. Whatever works for you. Uh, Okay, uh, from all the new features in Python 3.7, which one is your personal favorite and why? Right, no, data classes. Data classes, and why? Uh, just because uh, sometimes when you have to explain um, a class, that was the case for uh, some trainees with, uh -huh. with me, uh, I tried to explain the, ta the class with the tuple, the name tuple, the dict, because they are kids. And with the data classes, just in one or two lines, you can explain just a, uh, a class. You don't need to make okay. a lot. Do you know Java with the private accessor and protected accessor? That's the same thing. Mm -hmm. Just the data classes, you, have, you can be confident uh, with the access to the, the attributes. And yeah, just that. And I, I don't like the name tuple. Okay, there's one question that's related to this one. Uh, do the new data class definitions require type specification? Yeah. Okay. Without that, we have a problem. Or you can use the ATTRS project. Uh, okay, you know my pie. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Tell me, please. <laughs> I'm just. That's very really terrifying. Terrifying for me. You are 200 in the state, and I'm just here alone. When I have a question for you, please. I don't want to be, oh shit. You know, IT people are shy, so you know, <laughs> don't, worry, don't worry about that. About that. Uh, sorry about that stereotype. So what uh, about slots and data classes? Uh, oh, they, uh, I received this question before. I don't remember, but I think we don't use the slots. I'm not sure, uh -huh. not sure. Okay, is it possible to call something like super or get adder inside your implementation of get adder to use the, the default implementation? A module is so a type, an object. Normally, yes. Okay. But you will have a crash. How well can I customize init in data classes? Um, yeah, you can, you can customize it, uh, or you can use the post init. It's an external function. Okay. Uh, but you can do it. Hmm? Yeah. Are you suggesting that we use Python 3.7 in, in, instead of 3.6 uh, in secondary school education? Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you so much. Really? Yes. <laughs>